Hi everyone, welcome back to Home Talk Live. Those of you who are new, welcome. My name is Lily. You can find me over at lilyarter.com where I make all kinds of cool DIYs. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do um, three last minute stocking stuffers. and These are super cute and they're memorable because we're going to be using picture prints. So, um, And you guys can print these at home. I actually was out of ink at home and I went over to our local library and got all of mine printed for like under a dollar. So these are super budget friendly and let's jump right in. I'm going to start with our little, little sorry, I'm already spluttering, but um, I'm going to start with our little leather album. So for our leather album, you're going to need your leather. And um, I actually didn't have any um, real leather on hand, but I will show you guys what my first one came out like. And I used real suede that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. So this was from Joann's that I got, and this is just faux leather. So it's shiny, kind of like a matte or satin finish on one side, and then there's like a suede on the other side. So I went ahead and pre-cut all of this. To attach your pictures, we're actually not gonna be attaching them to the leather because it's too flimsy. So we're gonna use a piece of wood for support. And you're gonna need this balsa wood. That's actually what it's called. And um, mine's was about 1 16th over four inches by 36. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this down into little squares. And you guys, this is super easy to work with because I will literally show you guys. Scissors cut through it like butter. So. This is nice. You guys don't need like one of those. So let me just show you guys how easy it cuts. It cuts like butter with scissors. So, and I'm gonna try cheaper scissors because these are actually heavy duty. But just to see if it works. Yeah. See? Look at that. Even cheap scissors. So it cuts right through, and you guys can cut it down to size. So this is gonna be our support for our pictures. So I went ahead and pre-cut my wood pieces, and I'm going to go ahead and start showing you guys how we're gonna attach the pictures to it. So I have a few pictures ready here, and what we're gonna do, it, and I pre-cut some right there, so I'll go ahead and turn them your way so you guys can see. And you guys can totally have them, the library, well, I don't know, I'm sure any library lets you print colored, but I decided to go with black and white because I kind of wanted more of a modern look. Where do you get the wood? The wood I actually purchased at Michael's and it was $2.99 for that little sheet. So, Okay, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually using a matte um, Mod Podge because I don't want it to be shiny, but they do have the gloss. And I'm pretty sure the gloss is probably more durable, but... Oh, it's the same picture, but... So I'm just going to apply a thin coat, I'm going to use a bigger brush, it's too small. I'm just applying a thin coat of Mod Podge on the back and this is not, we're not doing a transfer so you guys don't have to worry about it drying overnight or anything like that. Just make sure that you have a good nice coat of Mod Podge on the back and then we're going to apply this to the wood if I can get it off. <laughs> What's the wood called? The wood is called balsa wood. Balsa wood. Yeah. So, and I'm going to try and get this on there as even as possible. Okay. Hi from Ohio. Hi guys. Don't forget to let us know where you're tuning in from. We are tuning in from Idaho. We had our first drops of snow today. Well, I didn't see it, but I was told so. <laughs> Um, so make sure you uh, even out any bubbles just with your finger. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, just with your fingers, and that'll be good enough. Okay, I'm gonna move on to our next one. And as you guys can see, I'm doing this live. It's super easy to do, and it's super quick. So you guys can make one of these in no time. Okay, I'm just gonna apply this one up. And you guys can do an extra coat on top just for added security, like if you feel like it's not going to be durable enough with the glue just under, you could totally go over it. But the one thing I would probably do is let them dry at least a couple of hours before you put your album together. That was my mistake the first time. I did a coat on top and then I put the album together and since there was glue under and glue on top, it didn't dry completely and when I pulled it off, they peeled the pictures off. So make sure you let it dry. 
that might be a big problem if you don't let it dry enough, okay? Ah. Okay. So. Does it have to be matte? It doesn't have to be matte. You guys could totally go with glossy. And um, like I said, glossy is probably more durable. The only reason I went with matte is because I wanted more of a modern look. I don't really like shiny things, but it's totally optional. You guys could do whatever you like. And this is just regular paper, you guys, these printables. This is not, no, um, what are those expensive papers you get um, to print photos on? This is not any photo paper. This is just regular printer paper. Do you have to seal the top too? You don't have to, but you can. It would be more durable if you do. So, And I did on my first one. I actually sealed it. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to do it right now, you guys, because it's going to take forever to dry. Like I said, you have to let it dry at least a couple of hours, maybe even. I left mine overnight because I was so upset that they ripped the first time around. So... And I'm not measuring these pictures out. I kind of want there to be a little bit of a gap so you can see the wood. I like the look of the wood. You can totally um, glue the whole picture on there and then flip it over and cut with a razor blade if you want it to fit your wood exactly. But I kind of like the look of the wood, so I'm doing mine like that. I'm just cutting these down. So what's nice about these is you don't have to order your prints and wait for them to get printed. You could just do these like this. And they're perfect for stocking stuffers. They're super cute. I'm going to try to get this one as straight as possible. It looks crooked, but whatever. buy the wood again we bought the wood at Michael's you guys so and I don't know whoever missed it you guys it's super easy to cut I'll show you guys one more time those of you who have been tuned in I'm sorry <laughs> you guys have to rewatch this but I'll show you guys just in case one more time okay so this one turned out a little crooked but it's okay okay so the wood we got is this balsa wood right over here so and like I've showed you guys before it's super easy to cut just scissors and it comes cuts like butter okay so for our next step of this little leather album what we're gonna do is are the pictures just from paper yes just regular paper you guys can print this at home you don't have to go and wait for them to get printed at any store or photo print place. That's what's cool about it. So regular paper, it doesn't even have to be the laser printer. It could just be a regular black and white ink printer. One of your old printers, it doesn't have to be perfect. So what are we making again? This is a little leather album that we're gonna be attaching pictures to. So for our next step, um, the way I cut my little leather pieces out is I actually made a little, um, what's it called? pattern and I went ahead and traced each square and cut it out and then I marked where I needed my holes. So I'm going to go ahead and mark, make sure this is the right way. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my holes on this one and I just used regular pencil. If you guys are using a darker leather, say for example like this, you can use um, chalk. That's what I used for that one. So, and I'm just going to mark my holes to make sure they're all even. There, you guys can see the holes. Where do you get the leather from? So, um, this leather I got at Hobby Lobby. And it's actually called a leather trim. And it was just a big square piece and it was like six bucks. And, um, but, however, Joann's and Michael's doesn't sell real leather. So, this is full leather from Joann's. It's like some sort of a vinyl or something. So it has like a suede on the back and then it has the leather on there. And if you guys are using real leather, say for example, something like this, which is a lot thicker, you will need one of these. So this is a um, vintage leather hole punch. So you guys will need to use one of these to make your holes. But we tried this last night with one of these and it seemed to work. Hold it this way. Yeah. Oh. Hopefully my arms are strong enough today. Oh, there 
goes. Just a regular paper hole punch. Yep. So if you're using faux leather, a regular paper hole punch should work. And my arms aren't very strong, so you guys can see this is pretty easy. Okay. For our next, next step, what we're going to do is we are going to attach our um, rings. So, and I purchased these at Michael's. And they had it in the, this is what the brand was called. So it's called Idea, Ideology or something. And um, they had many little. Hello from Greece. Hi guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're liking this. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and poke these all through and secure them. So, well, if this would work. <laughs> you're kind of strong for tiny little guys. Okay, and they sold this in the um, scrapbooking section, so where they have this whole, this brand carries a bunch of little scrapbooking knickknacks, and that's where they sold it. Hello from Texas, Nebraska. Hi guys. Kentucky. How's the weather out there? Hi from Berlin. Okay. So for our next step, I'm actually going to use uh, leave the front naked like this, but I'm going to start adding our little photos, and I'm going to use E6000 glue, and I'm just going to apply, if I can open it. Hello from South Africa, India. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to apply a thin coat. Okay, or, what, what is this you're using? This is E6000 glue. E6000, okay. Yep. And I'm just applying this all around the edges, just like this. And this stuff is super strong. You guys don't have to gump on a lot. Just a little goes a long way. So. Could probably use hot glue too, no? You could, but this will actually, this is actually stronger. So. This stuff will probably rip your leather if you try pulling it off. So. <laughs> hot glue will just come off, and especially if it's. You get heat on it, the hot glue will melt away. It's cool in Austin, Texas. Oh, nice. Cool weather is always good. Although I am already missing the hot weather. It's always like that. As soon as the cold hits, you miss the hot weather. As soon as it's too hot, you want it to snow. Okay, and I'm just applying the glue on each of my little pieces of wood and I'm just doing a square you guys don't have to fill it in completely so and when you guys are cutting out your little squares make sure that you have enough room for the holes see how I have enough room for the holes right there because if you cut it too small then you won't have enough room for those ring holes so. okay love the idea Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you guys are liking this. And you guys, um, this sets pretty quick, believe it or not. This glue probably sets within about, gosh, I'd have to say a good four hours and it's dry. So you don't have to let it dry for the full 24 hours. But I probably wouldn't mess for it for a good 24 hours. <laughs> you could probably stick it in the stocking stuffer right away if you don't um, coat the top of your... Oh, that one's a little bit too close. Okay. Sunny and cold in Arkansas. Okay, and our last picture. So, and, oh, this one has two pictures on it. <laughs> um, you guys, I tried doing this on wood originally, but that was kind of a fail because what happened was this wood ended up um, splitting. So that's how we came up with the leather. Okay. And that's it. That's how it looks, you guys. So it's a little booklet. And I'll show you guys what it looks like on this leather. And this is how it turned out on this one. So I added got glue all over. We added a little um, sign that says memories. And I made this out of the wood, too. I just painted it black the piece of wood and then I wrote memories with a white sharpie on it so that's how it looks on brown leather and I got this leather at Hobby Lobby for those of you just tuning in and that's it
there's your tiny little stocking stuffer. So now our little guy has two. <laughs> okay, for our next gift, and this one is even easier than the one we just did, we're going to be making little um, Polaroid magnets. I'm going to grab my napkin real quick. We got glue all over here, so I'm just going to wipe that down before we continue. And where's my lid? Oh, there's my lid. Um, you guys need to make sure and close your E6000 glue. This stuff tends to um, leak out if it's just sitting there open, so you lose a lot of glue like that. Cute idea. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you guys are liking it. Okay. For our next um, DIY, what we're going to make is we're going to do little um, magnets. And how we're going to do them is we're going to use these tiles that I purchased at Home Depot. So, and this um, tile, I'm pretty sure this is like a backsplash tile and it was $2 for this whole piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully use my um, razor blade. I love your shirt, Lily. Oh, thank you. I'm going to carefully use my razor blade, and I'm going to um, unattach it or cut it away from the glue or whatever. It's Just don't cut yourself. Yeah, careful, you guys. Please cut away from yourself. This is a bit dangerous. Don't let your kids do this part. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a few. Where did you get the tiles? These tiles are purchased at Home Depot, you guys. And they're just two bucks. Home Depot. Yeah, Home Depot. And they're just two bucks for this whole thing, which is super cool because that's a lot of um, Polaroid magnets for your fridge. These things could be expensive to order, so this is super quick and easy to make, and it's super cheap because this is just two bucks, and then I paid 25 cents for my prints just for one page. So um, you're coming out at about, I don't even know, cents for each tile. <laughs> For each magnet. Okay, I'm just gonna cut down a few just to show you guys. Okay, so, and I went ahead and cut down on the edges right there. So, I'm gonna get this top out of the way for our next step. I'm gonna show you guys, well, you guys can um, touch them up in the back since they're not all completely white. And I'm gonna, not gonna do all of them, I'm just gonna show you guys one. It doesn't make that much of a difference except for um, the sides. That's the only thing that bothered me. And I'm just going to use a little bit of white paint and dry brush it on there. Where did you have your prints done? At the local library. <laughs> 25 cents at the library. Yeah. It's super cheap at the library. And you guys can uh, do whatever. The nice thing is, you guys, if it's one thing I love about printing at the library is I could... Uh, I pull it up on Microsoft Word and I can enlarge or make it smaller. I feel like when you go to the printing store and get it printed at whatever place you're getting it printed, they only have like the wallet size or specific sizes and then they're super hard. So for crafting, I love to go to the library or like a home printer. If you have a home printer, just take your pictures, um, transfer them over to your Microsoft Word or just drag and drop and then you enlarge it or make it smaller. And usually, if you put your paper right against your computer screen, if it lines up with the paper on there, it'll be the same size. So, you kind of know. So, that's awesome. You can get them, like, custom-sized to your own taste. And it, you don't have to wait for them to ship in to your home or, I don't know, it's a pretty quick process. And all I'm doing here is I'm just touching up the sides because it kind of bugs me. If you guys don't want to touch up the sides on your tiles, you don't have to. And I'm only going to do one. For you guys I'm not gonna do all of them and this is just plain white paint you guys I use interior paint for everything <laughs> um, they were saying you need to use a utility knife for cutting those tiles uh, and we have one we just didn't get it out <laughs> sorry guys yes you can use a utility knife sorry we didn't go that far okay so I just touched that one up on the sides just so you guys can see the difference not that big of a difference but it does bug me. So, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I attached my pictures. I'm just gonna cut these down to size, and like I said, this is regular printing paper. And these are all of our little guy. So he's gonna have a lot of memories growing up with little um, Polaroids on the fridge. <laughs> 
And these are perfect for stocking stuffers because they're so tiny. Rhonda said she wants you to be safe. Thank you. I will be. I should have worn a shirt that says born to be safe. <laughs> uh, somebody said, love your wall decor. Did you make? I can't read the rest. It doesn't have it. Oh, um, if you're asking if I made the art piece behind me, yes, it's on my blog. You can check it out. It's the, it's made out of eggs and it's the 3D art on my blog. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I actually want to cut my photos down to where I have a bigger gap on the bottom than I do on the top. And I'm just going to kind of move them up. See, and it kind of starts looking like a Polaroid if you cut it exactly down to that size. And I don't, you guys can do like a little uh, thing where you have a pattern to go by. I don't, I'm not going to do that right now because that would take longer. But if you guys want to be, want it to look perfect, then you can have like a little pattern that you lay on each picture and cut it down to that exact size. So they're all exactly even. So. Connie said, or uh, yeah, Connie I think said she likes the skewers. What? Scissors. Oh, thank you. I got these scissors for five bucks at Joanne's, you guys. What a steal. <laughs> and they're my favorite scissors. I've never seen scissors with copper um, handles. So. Love your shirt. Thank you. Okay, for our next step, what we're going to do is we're pretty much going to do the same thing. What's nice about these DIYs is you guys don't have to learn any crazy techniques. It's pretty simple and straightforward, so it's more of an idea for you guys. So I'm just applying a thin coat of Mod Podge on here. So it's a glue? Yeah, it's just a glue. And we're going to attach this onto there just like we would. So it looks like a Polaroid. So we have a bigger gap on the bottom, okay? And we're going to do that with the three. So we have like six of them on our fridge already. Our fridge is going to be like stuffed with little mini Polaroids. Okay. And what's nice about this is they're all personalized, you guys. So this is a good way to keep your memories fresh. <laughs> okay. And as you guys can see, the darker photos definitely look better than the, the lighter photo because you can't really see the edges on that one. So I'm going to go ahead and do another dark photo for you guys real quick just so you guys can see the difference. Okay. Oh almost lost the tile there and you guys can give it a coat on top as well I'm not gonna do that for the sake of the video so it's quicker okay so we have those and then for our next step what I'm doing here is I'm actually using uh, old fridge magnets so these are just the old calendars you get in your mail you guys could totally go out and buy magnets but um, I did this with all of mine and um, it's a good way to upcycle. So. We got it for free in the mail. Yeah, so calendar. you guys don't have to um, go out and buy magnets. You could just use old ones and they'll never know because you do it face down. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to flip these all over face down. And I'm going to use my E6000 glue again. And I'm just going to apply my magnets. Make sure they're face down so they don't see it. <laughs> okay, just like that. And you guys can totally paint the back of your uh, magnets as well. You can paint them um, white so it's not visible that it's a tile, but I don't really care much. So You're back. not going to be able to see it anyway. Yeah. Well, if you're doing it as stocking stuffers, maybe they, you know. That is such a cute idea. Okay, Melissa. there they are. So, and I'll show you guys the other ones we have. Thank you so much, you guys. I'm so glad you guys are liking it. Don't forget to share if you guys love this idea. Okay, here's all the ones we have. And what's nice is, you guys, we did this with Oleg, and he had a blast making them with us. See, he had so much fun, he um, scraped off Daddy's nose right there. <laughs> he kept on putting the glue on and wiping it off just so it would be more durable, and he ended up peeling off half the faces, but it's okay. At least he had fun. So this is a very kid-friendly um craft you guys can have fun with that so. can you use enamel glue i'm pretty sure you can i've never used it though we haven't tried it but um are, is she talking about to attach the photos or to attach the magnets probably both i don't know 
I don't know what consistency it is. All I know is um, I've never tried anything besides Mod Podge for photos. So I don't know if she's talking about enamel glue for photos. I don't know what the consistency is. If it's too thick, it probably won't work because you need something super thin. Okay, for our next DIY, guys, we are going to make a personalized little bookmark. So, I know that we read with our little guy every evening, and our biggest problem is bookmarks. We always tend to lose our bookmarks. So, um, I decided if we make, like, a personalized bookmark, uh, the chances of us losing it are probably slim. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead, and I printed out pictures once again on regular paper. And I printed out a few that were bigger like this. So just to fit onto this metal tag. And I purchased this metal tag at um, Michael's. They're 50 cents per tag. So they're super durable, you guys. It's real metal. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down to size and I'm going to attach it. And then I'll show you guys how you can add pom-poms to it to have something stick out of your book. It looks cute. I'll show you guys. Okay. Thank you for answering questions. Everyone. Yeah, you're welcome, you guys. I'm so glad you guys had time to tune in. Thank you so much. I'm thanking the audience for answering questions. Oh. <laughs> I thought they were thanking me. Oh, okay. For our next step, what we're going to do is we're just going to attach that the same way we attached everything else. So no new techniques, no crazy ideas here. I'm Mod just podge. Yeah, Mod Podge. Pod, podge. It is tempting to say Mod Podge, you guys. Believe it or not, for years I would call it Mod Podge until I watched a YouTube video and somebody kept saying Mod or Mod Podge, and then I read the comments on there and they were like, "You keep saying Mod Podge and it's not Mod Podge," and I was like, "What? It's not?" Can you make it with colored? Yes, you can definitely make it with colored. I'm more of a neutral gal, so I tend to do everything more on the neutral side. You guys could totally do a pop of color. You can even paint your tags like red or something or green for Christmas. And But the reason I stayed neutral is because I'll show you guys. I am going to show you guys how to make little pom-poms. So Are the edges sharp on the metal? I mean, no, not really. Not to where you can hurt yourself. I mean, they're pretty, I don't know. Can you see against my hand, or should I put something they're, black? They're rounded off a tiny bit. Let me see. Here, let's put something black on there. There. Can you guys see? See, they're rounded off. Don't worry. They, they're not going to cut you. It's kid-friendly. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, for our next step, what we're going to do is we're going to make a little, um, uh, what are they called? Pom-poms, you guys. And I'm going to use a regular fork. So just make sure your fork has a little bit of um, a gaps, bigger gaps between the teeth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap or attempt to wrap this around my fork. And I'm going to count, let's see, 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? And ten -ish. then 10-ish. Cut it off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, string that I have left and I'm going to stick it through the center. So I'm sticking it through the center. I'm pretty much... So this is... Look, it's starting to was look... It, uh, real quick, was it la laminated pictures? Laminated? No. It no. was just regular. These are just regular prints. So you can regular print these at home. Outs. Yeah. Not print these laminated. at home on 8x10. They don't have to be on photo print paper or anything. Okay, right. so I went ahead and took my tail and I stuck it through the center. And I'm pulling it back around and I'm going to stick it through the center again. So we're pretty much making a loop in the middle. And it should kind of start looking like a bow at this point. I don't know if you guys see a bow. But mm -hmm. I'm going to double knot it again and stick it through once more just for added security, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna tie this in a knot. So the third time around, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tie a knot and you're gonna pull as tight as possible, okay? And then you're just gonna pull it right off, the whole thing. So we're pulling this bow situation here off 
and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut all of these looped edges so it looks like a bow with and you guys could leave it like that and hang it on but I feel like it's too bulky I'm gonna go ahead and cut all my edges if my scissors can cut the edges okay Teresa said hi hi Teresa so I'm just sticking my scissors into the loops and cutting them loose. So what are you making? This is a pom-pom. Pom-pom. It's a mini pom-pom. We used a fork to make it. You guys can use anything you like to I know that the bigger pom-poms, people use their hands to make them, but um, for tiny ones like this, and then you just spread it out once you cut the loops down. You spread it out and you cut off any um, uneven edges, just like that. And then for mine, since my, see it looks like a little pom-pom, I don't know, does it look like a pom-pom? Mm -hmm. And then for mine, since I have such a tiny hole and um, I want it to look more delicate, I went ahead and spread my yarn, just like that, and I cut this off. You guys can leave it the way, that way, but I wanted it to look more delicate, so I went ahead and... And then you just stick it through and you tie it and that's it. You have your little pom-pom sticking out. And you guys can spread out your pom-pom more. But can you make one more pom-pom? One more? Yeah. Yeah. Just so they can see it. Um, I'll show you guys in a different color. One second. Let me go grab my yellow yarn. Okay. So my, I'm going to show you guys one more time. This is super easy, guys. I'm showing you guys with yellow yarn this time. For those of you, well, I don't know, maybe Gray's not as good on camera. So I'm going to wrap this around my fork. You just hold it with your thumb. Yeah, I'm just holding it with my thumb, and I'm wrapping it around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times, okay? We got it on there ten times. I'm cutting it off. I have a pretty big tail just in case, you guys. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tail, and I'm going to... Move this up just a little. I'm going to stick it through the center of the fork. Okay? Right there. And I'm going to come back around. Ooh, careful. <laughs> and I'm going to kind of create like a bow. So I'm just making loops in the middle. You're just going around in circles in the middle. Okay? And I do this twice. And then on the third time, as I'm going, instead of just going around, I go back, I pull it out just a tad bit, and I stick my yarn through. Okay? These are super easy to make once you get it, you guys. Okay, and I all I'm doing is I'm tying a knot the third time around. So I tighten it as much as I can, just like that. And then I pull, and it should look kind of like a bow. I don't know if you guys can see. And then I just pull it off, and you take your scissors, and you cut off the loops. And you just work around cutting off the loops. And then you spread your loops, and once you spread your loops, it's going to be kind of uneven. But you guys even it out. So see, you just fuzz it up a little and then you even out your edges. And I'm not going to even them out, you guys, for the sake of the video. But you can see, see, you have a little pom pom. So, and I'll show you guys what it looks like all done and finished. So here's one of our family picture. And there's the pom poms on there. So when you put it inside a book, let's put it inside one of these little albums of ours you see the little pom-pom sticking out just like that uh, where can you find your blog and do you have a YouTube channel I do have a YouTube channel you guys so I have everything um, at Lily Arter so that's how it's spelled and I have Pinterest um, Instagram I have YouTube and I post um, YouTube videos weekly so don't forget to check those out and I do have an additional two more DIY gifts so I did a blog post with this that had five gifts so there's two more gifts you guys can check out to this last minute um, DIY stocking stuffers. And you guys could totally do these as birthday gifts or any special occasion. But don't forget to jump on over to my blog. I have the video and I have the photos um, and instructions on how to make the other two. So in total it was five. So um, that's it I guess. Thank you so much you guys for tuning in. Thank you. Bye.